I was sharing with the folks last night that on December the 31st, 2018, leading into January the 1st, 2019, at midnight, I was in my pyjamas. That, not that that has any bearing on the word that I'm going to share, but I was in my <laughs> pyjamas. And um, in fact, Robin and I, mom and dad, watched the new year come in in Australia, via YouTube of course, in Australia, in Dubai, in London of course, and um, we watched it come in and then it came in, in in Trinidad and Tobago. We had a good time and the older people in our family were out but us the younger people, we were at home. And um, we had a, a wonderful time, we did. And I, we went to bed around 2.30, and as my head hit the, pe the, hit the pillow on the bed, thinking that I'm just going to, oh, yeah, you know, and tomorrow's a, this a holiday. Well, later on, it's going to be, you know, the holiday, so I can just sleep as I want. As I put my head on the pillow, um, the Lord um, impressed on me, it wasn't an audible voice, to go to the Word. So I have a pillow, I have a Word right next to my bed, and I have a, a notebook and a pencil always next to my bed, just in case. And so I picked up the Bible, and I started to read, and where would he have me read but the book of Amos? Amos. And I was saying to the folks last night, you know, I could understand Psalms because Psalms is so peaceful, you know, and it's nice and it's soothing and everything. But Amos? Anyway, so I went to Amos and I couldn't put it down. I, I, I couldn't put it down. It was so intriguing. But as well that every time I, you know, thought, well, okay, you know, just read the chapter. It was like, no, no, keep going. So I read the entire book and it's only nine chapters. Amos. Anyway, so I went to Amos and um, and I read the entire chapter and I will be sharing on that as the Lord uh, impresses and gives me as time goes on. But this is where he wants us to go this weekend and today. Amos 7 and verse 7. Amos 7 and verse 7. Amos chapter 7 and verse 7. In my Bible, it's on page 808. Look at, listen, don't feel bad if you have to go to the table of contents. All right, don't feel bad. Just go, just go. It's all right. So, Amos 7 and verse 7. And Amos 7 and verse 7, it says, Thus he showed me, he meaning God, showed me, meaning the prophet Amos, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall with a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I am setting a plumb line as a standard in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by and spare them anymore. The door of mercy is shut. That's what I have in the amplified um, classic translation. So a plumb line. Behold, and this is what the Lord highlighted, has highlighted to me for us this today. The, he showed me the Lord, verse 7, the Lord stood upon a wall with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And he said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I am setting a plumb line as a standard in the midst of my people Israel. A plumb line is something, as Eddie explained to us, a plumb line is something that um, is used to, um, as a standard for something, to make sure that something is straight. Amen? Vertical. Vertical, vertical yeah. Vertical. That it's vertical and that it's, it's straight. And God is saying he's setting up, he says, Setting a, I am setting a plumb line as a standard in the midst of my people. 
a plumb line. A plumb line, it's a standard, it's, a, it's, it's something that keeps us, keeps straight. If you're building something, you would use a plumb line to keep it straight. This wood, this is a wood. This is the word of God. This is our plumb line. This keeps us straight. This is his word. This is his word to us. Let us not allow a day to go by that we do not open and look into this word. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to understand. Help me speak the word to me, to my heart. This is how we live. This is how we deal with ourselves, with God and with each other. This, this is the plumb line. This is the standard. It never changes. God's word never changes. His, his standard never changes. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus is the word made flesh. This same word. In John it says, in the beginning was the wood. Oh my God, the wood. In the beginning was the wood and the wood was with God and the wood was God and there was nothing made that was made without. And the wood became flesh and dwelt among us. And Jesus, as I was sharing before, Jesus, when he was born on the planet as flesh and bone and blood like us, just like us, he was in the Word. He was the Word, but he was also in the Word. He was the Word, but he was in the Word. <sighs> He learned and he knew, as all Jewish people at the time, all Israeli people at the time, all, 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 especially, but girls too, but especially Jewish little boys at the time, they all had to learn the first five books of the Bible, off by heart. When Jesus was in the wilderness, and Satan came to tempt him. Every time Satan came with a lie, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our High Priest, our big brother, said to him, the reply was, it is written. Every time. And I was sharing with the folks last night, Jesus, notice, Jesus didn't say, I said, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. He could have said that because he's a word. Did, it, did he say, I said? He said, it is written. And he lived a life, the life that he lived on the planet, he lived an, as, as an example for his younger brothers and sisters who would be coming after him. So that's why he said, it is written. Because he says, okay, they got to see this, that they got to know this word and they've got to be in this word because every time Satan comes with a lie, they've got to know what's written. And respond with what is written. Amen. So let's go to Psalm 19. 
I'm going to share with the guys, with, with you all, what I shared last night too, because you see, there's, oh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the world. Um, and God has said he's setting a plumb line in the midst of his people. A plumb line. A plumb line keeps us straight. He's going to measure us by his standards. God it measures us by his standards, not by our standards. Amen. Not by our own standards, the way we, well, we think, I think this is how I should do it, this is how I should. No, not by our standards. He's going to measure us by his standards. He's not going to measure us by our standard. He's not going to measure us by the world standard. He's not going to measure us by business, leading business standards and practices. He measures us by his standard. And his standard is his word. So God is saying, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people. This is the straight way. Stay with the straight way. Stay with the straight way. I'm putting the plumb line, the plumb line. You can see the plumb line. You can see the lines. You can see the vertical. Stay with the vertical. Because if you take your, if you take your eyes off the vertical, everything's going to seem like it's okay. But surely it's okay. All, 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 everybody all together. Sure, that's love. We must show love. Everybody all together. We must be all together. Doesn't that sound perfectly logical? Unity, that's the other word. Unity, unity, unity. So we must all be in unity. All the different religions must be in unity. When my Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come by me, by the Father, except through Jesus. Except through Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 1, I'm just going to go there quickly. John chapter 1, he came into the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Verse 11, he came to that which belonged to him. To, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. To his own, to his domain, to his creation, to his things, to his world. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. Verse 12, but to as many as, as did do what? As to as many as did receive who? Did receive who? And to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority to become the children of God. Brothers and sisters, brethren and sistren, I'm here to tell us all, remind us all, that not everybody in the planet is a child of God. We are all created by God. Amen. And God indeed loves all of us because you know why? For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. 
But not everyone is a child of God. I love them and I pray that they would come to the knowledge of the truth that there is only one God and only one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Christ Jesus, who came at the appointed time and made the atoning sacrifice for everyone, the testimony that was given at the right time. So there's a plumb line. Amen. So Psalm 19, starting in verse 7. You know what? We're going to go 7, but I'm, I'm just going to run through 1 to 6 first of all. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows and proclaims his handiwork. Remember we were talking about it before? Day after day pours forth speech, and night after night shows forth knowledge. There is no speech nor spoken word from the stars. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice in evidence goes out through all the earth. Their sayings to the end of the world. Of the heavens has God made a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and it rejoices as a strong man to run his course. Its going forth is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the ends of it, and nothing, yes, no one is hidden from the heat of it and then it goes straight on to say this is the prom line the law of the Lord is perfect it has an effect restoring the whole person Law, when you study the word law out, law means instruction or direction. So the, you could read it, the instruction or direction of the Lord is perfect. And the end result of it in your life, as you follow his instruction and his direction, restoration of the whole person. The testimony, if you study that word out, testimony, it means evidence or proof or witness, the testimony, the proof, the evidence, the witness of the Lord is sure, making wise the symbol, simple, the testimony, the testimony, your testimony of what God has done in your life, your personal testimony that you get to share with people. That's a testimony of the Lord. We didn't save ourselves. We weren't even so smart as to know to come to Jesus. Jesus by ourselves. Anybody that thinks, well, I'm really smart, so I came to Jesus because I weighed up all the options and this was the best option. No, it was the Father by the Holy Spirit drawing you. Amen, amen, amen. So the testimony of the Lord is sure. When it says sure, you know your testimony is sure. When I say sure, it means, okay, my testimony, your testimony. When we testify of what God has done for us, it's sure. Why is it sure? Because it happened to me. You can't convince me that it didn't happen. I'm sure. It's sure because I'm living this thing. Yes, that's right. It's not something somebody told me. You understand? <laughs> I was a total introvert. Hated speaking to people. Hated, when I say hated, hated speaking to people. Hated it. Not just uncomfortable, hated it. Hated speaking to people. Hated being around people. Didn't want to talk to anybody all the time, you know. At school, at home, wherever, even at home. Introvert. But my God, it must be by his strength that somehow I can get up here and talk to you. And that he put me in a place that he put me on the TV. Somebody that does not want to talk to anybody. He put me on the TV. Amen. 
for eight years every Friday night. Live, oh my God, when I think about live TV, live TV, you know, I'm a, not, you know, do, do your best you can, Michelle, and then we'll edit it all out, and then we'll make it look good. Live, for two hours. Listen, when I think, oh my God, God, it must be, his testimony is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts, verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right. When I study that word out right, the precepts, the fundamental principles of the Lord, the rule of conduct that the Lord sets out. His fundamental, you know, he has fundamental principles and he has rules of conduct that we find here. And so these, these fundamental principles, these rules of conduct of the Lord, they are right. Oh, but following them and doing it, it has an end result. It rejoices the heart. Doesn't it say that in your Bible? Does it say that? The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. If your heart's not rejoicing, let maybe take two or three steps back and say, wait a minute. Oh Lord, okay, is, is, is there some rule of conduct? And sometimes rule of conduct is not only what we do physically, it may be a thought pattern. And he's saying, no, 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 this, think this way about it or that or this or that. <laughs> the commandment of the Lord, command, the Lord has commands. The commandment of the Lord is pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. Sometimes we're in a fog. We're going through a situation and we're in a fog. It seems dark all around us. It's not dark physically, but it's dark, you know, you can't see a way, you don't know the way out, you don't know, you can't, yeah. It's foggy, it's dark, it's, <laughs> I don't know, I can't, I can't see. But my Bible says the command or commandment of the Lord, how do we find it? What is it? It's in here. Is it's pure and bright, and what the end result is, it enlightens your eyes. So it's no longer dark. The reverent, verse 9, the reverent fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The reverent fear, the awe, you know, some, sometimes we use the word respect for Fear of the Lord is also respect of the Lord, but respect is good word, but it doesn't always cover the fullness of it. And I want to tell everybody in here, if there perchance is anybody in here, and I know that there is, anybody in here and you have no fear of God, you don't fear him. You, when you see people worshiping and praising God and shouting hallelujah and, 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 and just getting so excited about him and who he is and worshiping and you're thinking, I don't get it. What's the big deal? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I've heard he loves me. I heard he died on the cross. I, do, I heard he, I was even baptized. But I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it why they're so excited. I, I don't get it. It's okay. I, I don't get it. I don't get why they're so excited. I don't get the God that God is so, I don't get it. It's okay. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Say to him, Lord, or even if he's not your Lord, God, God, Jesus, I don't understand why people get so excited about you. And I, I ask you to show me. Show me. 
That's all he wants, you know. He wants our honesty. He doesn't want us to fake it till we make it or fake it till we get there. Just ask him. And I'm being raw and right down to the level. And I, I know that I have to do that because time is short. And this putzing about is not going to wash well. This is the time for us to return to the plumb line. So as I said to us all, ask him, ask him, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Show yourself to me. I, I want to know you. I want to know, I want to know what the big deal is. I, I want to know. And he will. <laughs> Guaranteed, he'll show up. The ordinances of the Lord, the last part of verse 9, the ordinances of the Lord, ordinance, an ordinance, it's almost, it's like a fundamental principle, it's like a rule of conduct, but it also has the connotation of a decree, the ordinance, the decree, the, the hmm, for, for want of a better word, for instance, you know, we have promises, he says, um, by, by, um, uh -huh. by Jesus' wounds we are healed, it's an ordinance. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decree. God says, by his wounds, you are healed. Right. So by the ordinances of the Lord, the, sorry, the ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Verse 10. More to be desired are they, all those things we talked about, the law, the precepts, the command, more to be desired are they than gold, even than much fine gold. They are sweeter, that's... They are sweeter also than honey and drippings from the honeycomb. The more we get into this word, the sweeter it is. I'm telling you, the more we get into the word, the sweeter it is. It's like, ooh, this is so good, God, this is so good. The more, they are more to be desired, are they, than gold, even than much fine gold. They are sweeter also than honey and drippings from the honeycomb. Moreover, verse 11, moreover, by them is your servant. How many servants of the Lord do we have in the house? We're servants, but we're also sons and daughters. That's so good. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, reminded. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic again, so it kind of amplifies everything. Warned, reminded, illuminated, and instructed. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, reminded, illuminated, and instructed, and in keeping them there is great reward. Verse 12, I love this. I love the honesty of, of David. He, David says in the psalm, who can discern his lapses and errors? Clear me from hidden and unconscious faults. Do you see how he's, he, he, how he's crying out to God? Clear me, Lord, from hidden and unconscious faults, the things that I don't even know that I'm not doing right. Clear me from them. Verse 13, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, from froward sins, from willful sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be blameless and I shall be innocent and clear of great transgression. Verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock and my redeemer. Let the words, Lord, even now, we're praying. Any, anybody who, who is in agreement with this, we're praying now. Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Isaiah 58, the Lord is calling the house to a fast, effective immediately. Verse 5, Isaiah 58 and verse 5.
The Lord is calling the house to a fast, effective immediately. And each of us is to fast the way that the Holy Spirit has inspired us, speaks to us to fast. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lay out to you what you have to do to fast. You ask the Lord and he will show you. He's given me personally some particular directives and that's what I'm going to do. But each one of us, it's between you and God. So verse 5, is such a fast as yours what I have chosen? A day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? Is true fasting merely mechanical? Is it only to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? To indicate a condition of heart that he does not have? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day of, to the Lord? You know, when we fast, you know, that we look like, um, uh, like, that's like we're dragging around and miserable and, you know. Rather, verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen, the Lord is saying to us, to loose the bonds of wickedness? Where? In everybody else? No. In me. To undo the bands of the yoke? Where? In everybody else? No. Me. To let the oppressed go free? Who? Everybody else? No. Me. In whatever area? And that you break every enslaving yoke, everything that the enemy has been trying to put on you. You know, when we fast, what we're doing is we are turning aside. Turning aside from the regular, from the ordinary. We're separating ourselves. That's what the Lord is calling the house to do. To separate yourself from the regular, from the ordinary, and just hear me. Just listen to me. Just be honest with me. Let me touch those places. My father-in-law is a medical practitioner, and for years, and he knows, that he was in surgery, that in order for surgery, for things to be taken out, things to be adjusted in a person, what would happen is they would have to go into the operating theater, but what would happen, they'd have to go to sleep. Because if they're awake, because of the pain, sometimes, yeah, and, and you're cutting your, you'll be flailing about and shouting and yelling and flailing about, but then the work can't be done. So in order for the work to be done, the person has to be still. So fasting is a way of being still. It's not that we have jobs and responsibilities and things like that. So yes, of course, we fulfill those jobs and those responsibilities and we look good while we're doing it. Don't, don't, ladies, if you wear makeup, wear, put on your makeup, fix your hair and look good. Don't be like, ooh, you know, soak your head in lime a call and <laughs> tie up your head and go fasting. Right? <laughs> Look good. So yeah, we have work and we have, we have responsibilities and so on. We're continuing and we're doing those things. But even as we're doing those things, we are pulling aside. We are meditating on the word. We are praying in the spirit. It, you know, under our breath, we are focusing on the Lord. We are turning aside. We're turning aside from the rubbish on the television and on the radio and on the stuff and on the YouTube and on the Facebook. We're turning aside from all the noise. Yes. And we're being quiet so the Lord can do the Surgery. As I said before, I, sorry, I didn't say that before. I said that yesterday. There's a scripture that we all say, if my people, the Lord says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. No, oh, Lord, not me. I oh, don't know wicked ways. I ain't got no wicked ways. That's for everybody else. I ain't got no wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. Wicked just means twisted. That's what wicked means, twisted. Bring it back to the plumb line. Plumb line's not twisted. The plumb line is straight. Right, 
Rather, is not this the there? Right, bands of yoke, yoke, let the oppressed go free and that you break every enslaving yoke. It's a time to listen. Verse 7, is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood? Then shall your light break forth like the morning and your... Oh my God. Okay. Then shall your light break forth like the morning and your healing, your restoration and the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, conducting you to peace and prosperity and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am, if you take away from your midst yokes of oppression, wherever you find them, the finger pointed in scorn toward the oppressed or the godly and every form of false, harsh, unjust and wicked speaking. And if you pour out that with which you sustain your own love for the hungry, life for the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in darkness and your obscurity and gloom become like the noonday. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and in dry places and make strong your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. It's not only for us for us as individuals, but it is for families and for communities and neighborhoods, for the city and for this nation. Amen. For this nation, which is hurtling towards carnival. And you shall be called repairer of the breach, restorer of streets to dwell in. I know everybody's tired, it's Sunday morning and it's lunchtime now. I know everybody's tired. I know everybody's sleepy. But this is the word of the Lord to us. And even that's part of the scripture where it, say, where it says, oh, this morning the Lord said to me, turn, don't turn aside from your only, or part of the fast is that we do not turn aside from our own, only from our, even our flesh and blood. We don't turn aside from the needs of our flesh and blood. And I always talk that, talk, thought that was to be, you know, your relatives, your physical relatives, and yes, that is true, but it also your own flesh and blood. Do you know, as born again believers, as born again believers, and the Holy Spirit is alive in us and lives in us, we need the word. The Holy Spirit quickens our perishable, short-lived bodies. Romans 8.11. And what the Holy Spirit works with is the word. So our flesh and blood also needs the word. So when we feed on the word, it also has an effect on our flesh and blood. Our flesh and blood needs the word. Because that's how we are propelled on the planet. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. For me to live, to me, for me to die is gain. But, oh my God. But for me to live is Christ. Christ. 